Donald Trump is not immune from prosecution for the alleged crimes he committed during his presidency to reverse the 2020 election. In rejecting unanimously the former president's immunity arguments, the appeals court in Washington said the public interest in holding a president accountable outweighed the potential negative impacts on the office of the presidency. It is a setback for Mr Trump and it does now open the way for the trial to resume, probably in late spring. Our North America correspondent Nomia Iqbal is in Washington for us uh, tonight. Uh, this is a thorough dismantling of Donald Trump's arguments, uh, Nomia, and, and notable that it was unanimous. Oh, this is a huge setback for Donald Trump, for sure, because this has been his defense, uh, that because he wasn't convicted of impeachment by Congress, uh, his ar lawyer's argument was that therefore he shouldn't face criminal proceedings. But the ruling by the, the three judges was pretty eviscerating. I don't know if you've had a chance to go through all of it. But um, just one thing that stood out for me was that they said that his immunity claims, I'll quote it to you, Christian, would reject the most fundamental check on executive power and that it would collapse our system of separated powers by placing the president beyond the reach of all three branches. I mean, essentially what they were saying is that, let's just say this immunity claim was stood. It would logically, you know, if you go by the logic, it would mean that a president could call for the political assassination of a rival or that they could steal state documents and sell them on and not face any criminal proceedings, any kind of criminal prosecution. So their argument is that this is not former President Donald Trump, this is citizen Donald Trump, and therefore he will be treated like any other criminal defendant. Nomi, thank you very much for that. Let's bring in Karen Morrison. She's an Associate Professor of Law at Georgia State University. Thank you for being with us. Um, the question now, I guess, is whether the Supreme Court takes it up. How long before they make that decision? It's hard to say. The, um, the appellate court gave... Uh, Donald Trump until February 12th to uh, file their, his petition to be heard by the Supreme Court. Uh, there really isn't, the Supreme Court kind of acts by its own rules, so there's no real um, timetable for them to decide. Um, however, the fact that the, the case was unanimous at least leaves open the possibility that they might just say, we, we, we decline to hear this case, in which case the appellate court judgment would stand and the case could resume. And until that decision is made, um, what does the judge at the trial court do? Because I think earlier in the week she she put the jurors on hold. Can 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 that trial continue? Can they start preparing for that trial while the Supreme Court takes its decision? Most likely not. I think that what would happen would be the case would be sort of held in abeyance or suspended until the Supreme Court decided. And if they do decide to take the case then that'll be that'll take a little bit longer because you know not only do they have to decide whether they're taking it they then have to sort of make up their minds what they want to do about it a lot of people today have said that the nature of of the judgment the fact that it was unanimous is is almost a signal to the supreme court but but i guess this is this is such an important matter in in constitutional law for the United States that you wonder whether some of the justices might just want to decide on it. It would only require four of them to vote. Can you see a scenario where they would want the final say on it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm just saying there's a possibility that they could decline, but they most likely, I mean, who can say most, I, I'm not in the prediction business, but um, I think there's a very good chance that they will hear it, if only to say, um, you know, in, in the best case scenario, if only to say that the uh, appellate court got it right, you know, changing a few things here and there, um, there's the possibility that they might overturn the um, the appellate court. But it is a very well reasoned and very complete opinion. It also sort of it seems logical, um, as your correspondent just said earlier. It doesn't it doesn't make sense that a president could call for the assassination of a political rival and then just blithely, you know go about his business when not president and not have to face any criminal charges. It doesn't make sense that anybody should be above the law. So um, I don't think his chances are good of, of winning this, but the, but the delay is still, it, it's going to move faster. That is, he has had a major setback. And um, well, that, I think that is the point, isn't it? That that all these procedural moves have, of course, been about forestalling the trial. But as you say, it does now move at a quicker pace. So can you 
see, where perhaps last week you might not have seen, do you, do you see a situation now where actually this does get to a verdict before the election in November? It's not impossible. I mean, if the, the Supreme Court, if they want to move quickly, they can. So let's, you know, they could conceivably come out with a decision, say, by the end of March. The case could go ahead by maybe May. Yeah, there could be a verdict. Um, but, you know, that that's sort of that's assuming that everything goes very smoothly and, and you know, it's it's not it's not a certainty by any means. Well, uh, as it goes on, of course, he does raise money off it. So not all bad for Donald yep. Trump. <laughs> Karen Morrison, <laughs> thank you very much indeed for that.